Hi everyone, welcome to our second PowerPoint where we are going to dis discuss some foundations of employment law. In the first PowerPoint, I introduced you to the topic of employment at will as the default rule for employment in the United States. And then we started talking about some exceptions to employment at will. So as we mentioned, one of those exceptions is that category of employment discrimination laws, which we'll talk about next, and you'll have an opportunity to do a homework assignment on. The next exception is if you have a contract or if you're a member of a union that specifies some reasons that you cannot be just terminated or fired at will. The third is those groups of lawsuits that we went through called wrongful discharge or wrongful terminations. Now remember with those, someone's already been fired, but then that fired employee now becomes the plaintiff in a lawsuit against their employer based on wrongful termination. The last big category of exceptions that I want to mention here is something called the Family and Medical Leave Act. So there's actually two to talk about. So all semester we've been talking about the federal laws and the state laws. So here is an example of a federal law that in the world of laws is actually relatively recent. It's just from 1993. And this is a law that can be seen as an exception to employment at will. Because FMLA, as it's known, the Family and Medical Leave Act, allows an employee who is a full-time employee at a company or business that has at least 50 or more employees to take time off to care for themselves or a family member due to a medical issue or also the birth or adoption of a child. So let me walk through a little bit more about it and how this is an exception to employment at will. Because it might seem remarkable that prior to 1993, if you needed to take time off for yourself to care for your own medical issue, and you did not have any more sick time, and you did not have any more vacation days, you could get fired because you were not showing up to work. The same thing would be true if you want to take time off to, let's say, take your spouse or your child to medical appointments. You could be fired if you didn't have any more sick or vacation time, but you had a reason to take this time and go care for your child or your family member or yourself. And believe it or not, women, many of us still use FMLA as the only source of time off after the birth or adoption of a child, in addition to vacation or sick time. If we have vacation or sick time, we usually take that first. But if you want additional time off, you can take that time off under the Family and Medical Leave Act. So a couple of important caveats that I've already alluded to. Again, this is an exception to employment at will because other than this law, a person could be fired for taking this time off to care for themselves or a family member if they were out of other forms of leave. But I think you already noticed a couple of the drawbacks to FMLA. Number one, it only applies to companies that have 50 or more employees. So small businesses, if you have only 10 employees, you don't have to comply with FMLA. The other caveat is, I think you saw it written on here, is that it's unpaid time off. It does allow an employee to take up to 12 weeks of leave, but you try taking 12 weeks of time off without being paid. That's really challenging. So the good news is you get to take the time off. The bad news is it's not paid. However, when you come back to work after your 12 weeks off, or you don't have to take all 12 weeks, you can just take one week, you could even just take a day. The key is that your job, so either the job you had or a comparable job will be held for you. So that's some job security. So really what does FMLA give you? It gives you that exception to employment at will, that holds your job or a comparable one for when you return from the leave. So also notice you have to have been a full-time employee first. You can take the leave, you know, you don't have to take all 12 weeks as I mentioned, but you can take a week now, you can take a week later at another time. So you can stagger it if need be. But this is a really significant law in, in the development of employee rights because prior to this law, there was really no protection for taking time off after you used up your own vacation or sick leave. But clearly you can see this the law is not complete enough. It's not paid time off, which is a huge problem. It only applies to large companies, that is companies that have 50 or more employees. And you have to be a full-time employee in order to take Family and Medical Leave Act. 
So although this law gives some rights and protections to employees, it's certainly not as protective as it can be. So what's really interesting is that in Massachusetts, we actually have a really brand new, only about a year old state paid Family and Medical Leave Act. This is really significant. It was just passed in the year 2019. So this is a really new law that goes into effect really into, I think it was passed maybe 2020, no, 2019, but goes into effect really moving into 2021. And it differs from the federal law first and foremost because it's a paid leave. So that is significant. It grant, grants up to 12 weeks to take care of the health of a child or a family member. So that would include the birth of a child. 20 weeks off if it's your own health condition. And the other significant difference between the Massachusetts paid law and the federal law is that it applies to all businesses. There's no minimum number of employees that you need to have in order to comply with the Massachusetts Family and Medical Leave Act. It also gets rid of the requirement that it only is available to full-time employees that had worked there for at least a year. So it's a much more progressive, much more um, comprehensive family medical leave law at our state level than at the federal level. However, we're, I don't even know what other states have such a progressive law, but it's not really that many. In many states, uh, the Family Medical Leave Act is the only one that grants that protection from being terminated, that, that exception to employment at will. So a lot more will be developed and we'll learn a lot more about this law as we go because it's still, uh, it's still relatively new here in Massachusetts. Okay, last but not least is always a really interesting topic, which is, can you be fired or terminated for what you do on your own time, like on the weekends or just your time off from work? I mean, obviously our employers have a lot of control over us in the workplace, like things like uniform, the hours we work, the tasks that we do. But come Friday night, if I go out and I go to a party and I'm drinking and I'm, you know, doing illegal drugs and I'm smoking, can I get fired for those activities? So this is a really interesting area of the law. And in general, yes, you can. There isn't a protection in the law that says I'm not allowed to be fired for going out to parties on the weekends. As we'll talk about with discrimination law, that's not a protected class. So think about the problems that arise with social media. If I go out and I'm seen, you know, conducting activities that seem, you know, maybe not the smartest, maybe I'm seen doing drugs, maybe I'm seen doing some other dangerous activities, and there's some Instagram pictures or Snapchat or Facebook or something like that, and my employer sees them. Now, I was doing this, these activities on my own time outside of work. So can my employer fire me for these activities? And in most jurisdictions, the answer is yes, because there is no protection for that. Again, remember the default rule that you can be fired at any time for any reason, absent a significant exception that we've noted here. So that's something interesting. There's even cases of individuals get fired, getting fired for doing dangerous activities like going skydiving on the weekends. I also wanted to just mention something that's covered in your book, which is a little bit about drug testing, which is different than can you be fired for the off work activities, but does your employer have the right to drug test you? And the answer in most cases is yes, they do. But the right is generally, the right of the employer to drug test is limited to illegal drugs. So again, there's a big development with the area of marijuana law, um, in including many jurisdictions that are now legalizing marijuana, but keeping marijuana off the table uh, which, by the way, is still illegal under federal law. So it is still against the law, even if the state that we're in does not see it as a crime. Your, the employer does have the right to drug test for those illegal drugs and can certainly terminate you. So um, the one that gets a little bit tricky is what about legal narcotics like opioids that are legal, but also can really affect the way a person acts in the workplace. Um, so generally, employers cannot test for legal narcotics because those are legal to take. Now, you could always be fired, though, for your behavior at work. So if you're coming to work stoned or you're coming to work drunk or hungover, 
regardless of whether those were legal or illegal activities, you could be fired for being late, not doing your job, not, you know, not performing in the workplace. And it's not because you took those drugs or did the drinking, it's because of the, the conduct in the workplace. So I want to mention that one also. All right, that is the end of our review of the introduction to the principles of employment law and employment at will. So now make sure you watch the PowerPoint on discrimination laws as well.